All right, well, good morning. I'm Mark Pinto here at Phoenixville Public Library and welcome to another installment of our Community Services Spotlight. Today we have with us Mary Fuller, Executive Director of Phoenixville Area Community Services or PACS, which expires to be the lead resource for food insecurity in the Phoenixville community through food distribution and information and referral services. So good morning, Mary, and thank you for taking the time to tell us about PAC's mission and services today. Thanks, Mark, thanks for having me. Uh, you took my opening line, so I'll just have to roll into some other stuff. Uh, so I hope the audience is familiar with PAC's, Phoenixville Area Community Services, and, and what we do in the area. Uh, again, food distribution, information and referral, but mostly we're known for food, food distribution. Uh, I um, kind of lovingly refer to myself as COVID Mary because I took over the helm at PAX March 9th last year. So I almost have a year under my belt. And with me, uh, COVID followed quickly behind. And uh, as we all know, that changed the face of everything. So in some ways that was good for me because I didn't have a system yet here at PAX. So I think um, we, you know, we were able to adjust and, and roll with it as well as could be expected despite the quickness uh, that, that shutdowns happened. Uh, we, we quickly changed up our game plan and our protocols. And um, out of the horror, horror that the pandemic is, we've had some positive changes here at PAX. Uh, most notably, um, uh, good or bad, you can look at it either way, our uh, client base has greatly expanded. Uh, the good part of that is we have an abundance of food. We're focused pretty specifically now on food. Years ago, we were broader than just food, uh, but, but focusing on just food uh, enables us, uh, we have an abundance and now with people in greater need, uh, in part because of the pandemic, um, you know, we, we are able to serve those in need. And with the pandemic, of course, um, we've opened up our service area. So we used to be um, mostly serving people from five area townships or boroughs. And uh, we've expanded our borders and anybody who shows up to our door, uh, we make sure they have food to eat. Uh, we had um, uh, big success over the holidays. Uh, it was very important to us that no family go without holiday meals. So at Thanksgiving and at Christmas, Thanksgiving, of course, we provided turkeys with all the sides, including dessert. At Christmas, we gave people the choice of turkey or ham, again, with all the sides and dessert. And, and we saw that initiative increase maybe five times uh, what we had done the previous year. And part of that was due to the, the fact that some other area uh, pantries or agencies were not able to distribute holiday meals this year. So, um, also out of the, the COVID pandemic, uh, yes, we've seen a big increase in our, our, the number of people we serve, uh, but we've also instituted some new ways to reach the people we serve. Uh, the biggest one is delivery service. So when um, uh, you know, people who may have been exposed to COVID or you know, we serve a lot of seniors or you know, people with disabilities, it was too dangerous for them to come out of the house. We quickly adjusted to um, make sure we could deliver food to those people who, who needed their monthly food appointments. And, uh, and it doesn't even have to be just food appointments. If they call us and need food, we'll, we'll get it to them. We also instituted, of course, a curbside pickup. And, uh, and uh, I, uh, in the beginning, and we had to shut down letting clients come right into the building, of course, early on. Uh, another plus that happened out of COVID uh, on the back burner was always the idea, if any of you were familiar with 
the PACS location at 257 Church Street. Uh, you know how small that was for the work we were trying to do. We were spread out over three floors in a basement. Uh, the basement, you had to be under five feet tall <laughs> to fit in it. And uh, it was just jam packed with, with all kinds of food. And even where we were distributing food from, we were uh, constantly tripping over boxes and, and items. And um, so when the pandemic hit, that ramped up uh, our need for a larger building. So in uh, October of 2020, we were fortunate enough to open doors at 101 Buchanan Street, the former town supply building. So we're right on the corner of uh, Bridge and Morgan and Buchanan where, where they all intersect. And uh, we went from a little over 3,600 square feet to nearly 24,000 square feet. So we, we have ramped up operations tremendously. We have, uh, with, with long-term goals to set up. Uh, we're anxious to get clients back in the building whenever uh, that's deemed safe. And uh, we give out our food in a couple of ways if you're not familiar with that. So if you show up at our door, we have what is called the free bin area. And uh, now we have a whole spacious uh, big room full of items that people right now, we have a checklist that people tell us what they want at the door. Um, I'm gonna back up a second. I'm, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Uh, when the, the pandemic hit, we were very proud of a, a couple things. One was we never cut back on days of service. We're open five days a week, actually right now six days a week because we have Saturday morning hours. So, and, and we never deviated from that. We didn't scale back on our service hours. Um, and, and we, we also, uh, still offer choice pantry. So we don't just bag things up. Uh, we believe that creates food waste or, you know, it's, it's better and more dignified and, and serving. We're all about serving our neighbors with dignity and respect. And when they can choose the items that they want, uh, it's better for everyone. And, and that's the way we like it. So that I think was one of the most difficult pieces about COVID. Not only couldn't we let people in, but we had to find a new way for our, our neighbors to be able to choose uh, the, the food items that they use, that would use and, and would want. Of course, we try to stress the healthy and nutritious, nutritious choices as much as possible, uh, but but we don't question and we don't, you know, what, what people want, we will pack up for them. So we had to come up with a new way uh, to, to have clients let us know what they want. And, and that's always a work in progress uh, with new equipment or shelving or movable pieces that, that we get here uh, at our new building. So uh, I'll back up to the ways we distribute food. We have our free bin area. So in a non-COVID world, that would be where clients would come in and actually shop around and pick uh, from any number of uh, donated items. We have uh, partnerships with Trader Joe's four days a week. So we have fresh produce and fruit and salads, sandwiches, uh, but it's a mixed bag. It's whatever they, they donate to us. We now have a relationship four days a week with Wawa. So we get, um, you know, sizzly sandwiches, breakfast sandwiches, wraps, uh, a lot of bread and, and, and pastries. Uh, we recently started a partnership two days a week with Wegmans, who donates a lot of fresh uh, produce and Lidl as well. Um, uh, as they have items, uh, they will donate. They call us and, and we go to pick them up. And... I will tell you, we go to pick them up due to uh, funding from the Department of Environmental Protection, DEP, uh, state to DEP. Uh, we were granted funding to purchase a refrigerated van back in the summer. So that enables us to recover food safely. So when we have Wegmans pickup or uh, Lytle and those items are perishable food items, we have the ability to transport them safely 
back to our location. And, and that's, that's been amazing. If you are familiar with the old PAX building, we had uh, like one refrigerator and one freezer, which was always jam packed. We've been able to expand that here uh, at 101 Buchanan. Uh, we have a couple of glass door uh, refrigerated units for our free bin area so we can keep all these salad packs and fresh, fresh foods available daily to, to our neighbors who show up. We always have a great selection of bread and, and we uh, offer dairy products. Uh, we're really getting in, a, in um, a good cycle with being able to offer uh, some of the, the dairy staples, uh, milk, butter, eggs, and even cheese on a pretty daily basis, whether you're showing up at our door for free bin daily or for your monthly food appointment, which is one of the other ways we distribute food. Uh, that piece of our distribution um, comes, comes with a little bit of uh, a questionnaire to fill out in the paper you sign monthly when you come, because some of those food items are uh, given to us uh, via government funding. So we have to keep track of that. There, there are some stipulations we have to follow with that. But uh, uh, people come for a monthly food appointment and, and that's what we do. We, and we have bulked up that order. Uh, if they're entitled to come once a month, we wanna make sure they have enough food for their family. So we give a quantity based on family size. And uh, of course we have a lot of canned goods and, and non-perishable items that we send. And again, we call the people uh, in, in advance, they set up an appointment and about an hour before their appointment, uh, we call them and go over all their food choices based on the products we have, um, particularly the ones that rotate like the fresh produce. Uh, we have uh, beefed up, no pun intended, our meat selections so that we can offer our families uh, two, at least two meat choices a month when they call. And sometimes we have an abundance of meat choices that we can offer people who show up at our free bin. But we have a nice rotation of free bin items, whether it's canned goods, non-perishables, uh, sometimes frozen meal selections and, uh, and pastry and dessert items. So that stock always rotates. So we have our free bin, we have our monthly food appointments. Uh, we also do senior boxes specifically geared to, they come to us from the Chester County Food Bank, uh, uh, which is an agency who is one of our biggest suppliers of, of the food supply uh, that, that we have. We get weekly deliveries from the food bank. And uh, these boxes are several days worth of food specifically geared towards seniors. We, we distribute those once a month for seniors who sign up to get them. And we also have uh, what we call emergency food boxes. So if you call us and want a food appointment, um, but you need food that day, you can come in and get a food box until we can get you set up for your regular appointments. And those food boxes have a, have a like three day or so supply of non-perishable items. And then we would supplement that with whatever fresh items we have on, uh, on hand. Uh, and I've been talking, talking a lot. I'll pause for a minute and see if anybody has any questions at, at this point. Feel free to unmute yourselves, folks, if you do have a question. All right, I'll, I'll ask one question. Um, how did that uh, town toy, I mean, sorry, how did that uh, town supply building become available? It sounds like a great space. It's a wonderful space. Uh, the Town Supply, if you know any of the, the history that it, it was a hardware store, uh, family business, I think more than 50 years or so. And when the kind of the big box uh, hardware, the Home Depots, the Lowe's uh, started to gain popularity, um, uh, Town Supply shifted to doors. They, their specialty became doors. And then they sort of outgrew uh, the space here and they moved to Limerick. So that's how the space became available. Uh, and, and they were very interested. We were fortunate. Uh, several interested parties were looking at the building. 
but the previous owner was really, uh, he wanted the building, it, it has sentimental value to him, right? His family has always been in this business and he wasn't very interested in having the building knocked down to be developed into something else. And, and he was a community-based guy and this PAX moving here was a good fit for him. So we were able to uh, come to a good agreement and, and he's been happy. He's been back to visit a couple times and uh, he's happy that uh, the building is thriving uh, for us. And, and that was important to him and certainly worked to our benefit. So uh, we have this beautiful warehouse space. Like I said, we have big plans uh, for this space. We've expanded already uh, how we can serve but um, we have plans to even even grow that further. And uh, you know, I don't. I'll I'll give away a little bit of secrets. What what our hopes and dreams are as we grow into this space. But uh, down the road, we'd like to establish perhaps uh, a corner store here in our warehouse section, uh, where anybody can come shop. You'd have a card, and and uh, you can act like this is your grocery store. And in some cases, uh, perhaps uh, you're a neighbor who isn't in need, but it's convenient for you to shop here and that could create a revenue stream. But if you're a client here, you, your card would just swipe and, and you know, uh, more dignity and respect and choice and everybody being treated the same and nobody, you know, uh, so that's, that's maybe a big dream of, of a couple years down the line, maybe not so far. I'm, I'm one, uh, I like everything done yesterday. So we've, we've been doing a lot of work at this new building and, um, and we'll continue to, to do so. Like I said, the refrigerated van has helped us a lot. And um, one of the things, and, and our volunteer, core has, has been spectacular. With the big space, uh, that creates enough room for us to be able to socially distance as a staff. Uh, we, we try to do that. Um, you know, we all wear our masks around each other, but when we have volunteers in the building, uh, people are, we have enough space for them to kind of work in separate areas so that those who feel comfortable volunteering uh, can, can do so safely. We of course instituted with COVID uh, extra cleaning policies and uh, sanitation policies that we're very stringent about. And um, uh, I, I just can't say enough about the, the big space. I talked about our volunteer corps, which is critical to our operations right now, because uh, if you've read any of the things we've put out lately, you will know that uh, the bulk of the work that PAX does is done by five staff members. We're all five women and, and uh, two are part-time, <laughs> but, but we get it done. And our, our numbers, our service numbers, and mostly by the end of our fiscal year, we're uh, July to June. So by June 2020, our, our number had increased five times over the previous year. And a bulk of that happened, of course, between March and June. So it, it, it's kind of craziness. Um, and I will say another way we pivoted in the last year was our support of other agencies and meal providers. The, the bottom line for PACS is feeding people who need to get food. And we're not particular about if you come to our door to get it or you go to somebody else's door as long as you get that food. So we've really built that arm of, of what we do. So when I started a year ago, we um, provided uh, some support to about two agencies, two, well not about, it was two agencies. Right now we're supplying 12 to 15 agencies on a regular basis with food supplies. So if they have a need, and, and, and we're all over the board on that. If we have the, the dairy and produce to share, we do. And so we have a regular rotation. We call, um, or they call us when we have an abundance of something. What do you need? This is what we have. 
or they will reach out to us. I need, we just um, gave four cases of cereal to uh, a church program yesterday. And, and we do that kind of uh, stuff on a regular basis. Um, I have to say the community, I can't say enough about this area in the Phoenixville community. Uh, we hint at an ask and, and the community produces. So I ha they have been way more than generous. Uh, people doing neighborhood food drives, uh, collecting money, sending checks, um, offering volunteer help. Uh, the mayor has been amazing. Anything we've, we've asked of him, he's helped us promote who we are and what we do. And, um, you know, I have to admit, it's, it's hard for me to see how much we've grown until people tell me because I, I, I started as this exploded. So to me, this is kind of normal, uh, but I always appreciate when people tell me um, all the changes, all the positive changes uh, they, they see happening. And, and we're, we're proud of that. We, we work hard and we're all committed to PAX's mission. And, and I, I, think, I think that shows. Um, again, I'll, I'll pause if anybody has any questions. I had a quick question. I was just wondering, so you, you referred to someone as neighbors. So are there, are, when you say neighbors, are, do you mean your clients? And I was yes. just curious why you call them neighbors, like why you chose that word. Yeah, um, I, I, it feels more dignified and respectful than, uh, you know, client, um, while it's not a negative word, uh, I want people to feel when they come to our door, like they're going any place in public where everybody is the same. Uh, it, you're not just there because of, of need base. And, and, you know, another thing, an area, I think it's especially important uh, to treat people like that now because the segment of our population that has really changed are those who find themselves needing service for the first time ever. And they're not sure what's available. They're not sure how they're entitled or how to go about getting it. And, and it's hard, it's hard to come and ask for help, especially if you've never had to do that before. And so many people have lost their jobs or in uh, tight positions that they haven't been in before. And so we're happy to take the food worry piece out, out of that equation. And, you know, we, we try to greet everybody with a smile and act like you're just at a, you know, an Acme food market or giant food market. So that's, um, you know, so that's why I hope that answers your question. Uh, um, I have a question. Um, I grew up in Phoenixville, so I've, I've uh, been familiar with PACS for a long time. It, it uh, uh, used to be an information and referral service as well as a, a, a food bank. Is there an agency or some agencies who have taken that over? So if somebody calls you it because they don't know that, that something has changed here, what, what happens? We still are an information and referral service. So that is the piece uh, that we kept in addition to the food service. So, and, and that's a county, uh, we do get some, that is the small piece of our budget that comes from county funding is because we're information and referral. So you can still call us. Um, you know, we used to do emergency financial services as well. And, and that's the piece. Uh, we shift our focus strictly to food but if you call us, we still help uh, a good number of clients with paperwork, uh, particularly the Spanish speaking population. One of our staff members is bilingual. Uh, she's fluent in Spanish. So we still help clients fill out, uh, you know, rent rebate forms, uh, uh, LIHEAP forms, any, any of the agency forms that, that they have difficulty with. And we'll help anybody, not just, uh, those who uh, are Spanish speaking, because some of these forms are difficult. So we still take the time to do that, uh, but we also refer if you need help paying uh, your rent or utility bills, 
we have a whole list of agencies and we can send people into the proper uh, direction. So we do help with that. And we do try to follow up and make sure that, you know, that er people ultimately got what they needed if it was possible. So thanks, thanks for bringing that up. That's that's not an insignificant piece, <laughs> you know. That I I think it's still important, and uh, you know, however we can help the community is 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 what what we try to do. Uh, I mentioned before that the county funding is a small piece. So uh, and I don't know if I threw out the number five percent. That's a small part of 100%. So that means 95% of our operating budget comes from uh, donations and grant funding. And, and that's how we do what we do. And even a, a good portion of that is not in money, it's in donated uh, food items. So we have uh, uh, green beans to tomorrow, but it's good because who doesn't like green beans? Well. I'm sure there are those, <laughs> but we 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 are we are so blessed and so fortunate to really have an abundance of uh, many food items, and we're excited to be able to share that bounty. We're always looking for new partnerships. I mentioned like the Wegmans and and some of those uh, recovery programs that we have, and that's just been an amazing bounty for us, for the community, for the neighbors who come to our door. And uh, we're always looking to grow that. We may be starting something with Giant in the future. And the bigger location, the refrigerated van and added refrigerators on site help us with that. Uh, the loading dock and lift uh, don't hurt either when trying to move all this <laughs> product in and out, especially when you're five women. I hate to sound like that, but uh, you know, that's, that's just a fact of life. <laughs> So I don't know, Mark, how much time I was supposed to take. Um, I could talk for days about who we are and what we do, but I don't want to infringe on anybody's time. Good. Uh, does anyone else have another question? I just was a little curious, sorry. Um, sure. So you said you kind of operate in like these certain areas and it's kind of expanded, but you, so you would say that PAX is open to anyone that comes? That Absolutely. Yep. Anybody who comes to the door, we may not be able to do the, the big food appointments, but you can come to us every day. So in essence, you wouldn't need, you might not need to have that. But when you come on a daily basis, of course, the items that we have available would change. Uh, you know, another new program that uh, I began recently, or we began here at PAX, uh, we, we get so much bread, everybody's got bread to give. And we started, we put a bin outside of our door, one of those big plastic storage bins. We actually have one in our donation door, and I'll back up to that in a minute, but we have a big um, sturdy um, bin outside our main door and in it we keep uh, bread supplies in when bad weather is predicted and we had a lot of that in February we put emergency food boxes in there and some uh, perishable items that because the temperature was so cold could keep in this bin overnight so that people have access to uh, food even after PAX hours and we have found that that has been tremendously successful. And I think part of it is not only is it, food is accessible to people 24 seven in the community, but I, I do see people like to, again, it's another choice piece. So they get to look through the bin and select what they want. People miss that in, in a COVID world, being able to have a little control or, or, or some choice and, and get to pick pick what they like. So we're, we're proud to offer that. And in fact, we're looking to expand some of those bins around the community. We're in talks with a few locations uh, that, that we would stock and uh, upkeep some of these bins around the area uh, so that people who can't get to PACs, uh, we're, we're cognizant of 
uh, people who don't have transportation and we wanna make sure they have access to food. If they can't get to another pantry, they will have access uh, for these bins. So, uh, right, we had typically our service area was uh, Phoenixville Borough, East and West Pikeland Township, Schuylkill Township and Montclair. But we see people from Norristown, from Pottstown um, and, and we will, we're happy to serve them. We've been offering a lot of support to the You Are Worth It Foundation in Spring City. Uh, Spring City is a close neighbor of ours and, and we support them whenever we can. Um, I mentioned donations. Uh, we accept donations uh, during our open hours. Uh, we have a, a bright green door that's on the Morgan Street side of our location. It's got a hanging sign over top with the PAX logo so you can easily see it. And there's a big sturdy bin outside of there. And I forget the name of the material. I'm, I'm blanking out on that, but um, it's not wooden. <laughs> kind of like a plastic, sturdy plastic material. So uh, you can show up with donations. If it's after hours or you went contactless, you can just put it in, the, in that bin or you can ring the bell at the bright green door and we'll come out and help you. Again, if you want contactless, call us on the phone. We'll run out and, and unload your car for you. And um, we've, we've put a new spin on food drives this year with the pandemic. So we have people drive up. We have volunteers that run out to your car and, and pick the items up and send you on your way. And, and that's been very successful. And, um, you know, again, I can't say enough about the giving community. So we do accept donations 24 seven and, uh, but in person between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. Monday through Friday. And we're here for a couple hours Saturday morning as well. I've read about and heard about a lot of food banks that are overwhelmed and running out of food and, and uh, with, the, with COVID. How, um, what is it about PACS that has allowed you to escape that? Right. You know, that was a big concern of mine in, in the beginning as, as you saw people you know, hoarding toilet paper and paper products and certain food items. I was afraid there was not going to be access to meat and, and some of the staples that people need. Uh, I have to say uh, two, two main things. And, and, and again, I can't stress it enough, the generosity of this community. It really, everybody stepped up and, and were so concerned about their neighbors in need that, that we would constantly get calls. We almost got overwhelmed the other way with the generosity. And uh, I, tell, I have to be honest, around Thanksgiving time, by the day, time Thanksgiving hit, I said to my husband, if I have to touch one more turkey, I mean, we just had turkeys everywhere, but it was beautiful. And, and nobody went without a turkey if they wanted it. And we were, we were proud to do that. And we were able to supply some other agencies with, with turkeys too. And um, I have to tell you though, when you're lifting, you know, uh, 15 to 20 pound or bigger turkeys uh, nonstop for seven hours a day, it, it you get a little sore. <laughs> but so, th so that, um, was a piece that happened, the generosity of the community, but I'll also say, um, and that includes the, the grocery stores and, and these partners that we have that are willing to donate food items. Uh, we had a nice partnership with Foresta's Meat for a while where we could call them and, and purchase, you know, uh, select amounts based on what they had. You know, we weren't gonna cut their customer base short but uh, they, they would supply us. Uh, but when COVID funding hit, I was able to put in a number of grant requests and received additional funding. So uh, we began to purchase and we still do, we still have funding. Uh, we went from supplementing our pantry at, from about $2,000 a month. Uh, now we, we spend up to 10,000, you know, not up to sometimes over $10,000 a month to supplement our pantry to make sure we have the items that that we need, um, you know, to keep everybody 
in, in the items that, um, you know, are typical for every household. Do you know how people generally learn about PACs? Well, that's a good question. And that's, I think, a $64,000 question. So we, um, we, we try a number of things. I think the honest answer to that is probably more word of mouth than anything. Although we, we try to uh, participate, you know, we have a, try to have a strong social media presence, Facebook, Instagram, some LinkedIn, you know, always room for improvement there. Uh, we help people come to our website. We hope they see our big green sign. We made sure with the van that we had, we have our logo put on that. So you see it drive around uh, town and in the area. Uh, we're starting a, an online newsletter. We do do some mailings and, uh, you know, and, and through our partnerships with other agencies and the grocery stores. If, I'm not sure if you're from, familiar with Forenza's Food um, F4. They, ha uh, they help with food recovery in, in the area and, um, you know, with, with their help too. Uh, and, and any agency that helps us. And certainly uh, avenues such as this, I, I try, since I've come aboard, uh, I try to participate in as many community things as I can. It's not as much as what used to be uh, prior to the last year, right? Because we don't have in-person uh, events anymore to, to be part of. So um, and again, with the mayor's help, the mayor has been awesome. We just did an in the kitchen piece together uh, for uh, a Super Bowl event that that PAX did. So uh, check it out on YouTube if, if you want to uh, see Peter and I cook some soup together. Uh, he helped us do a uh, 12 days of Christmas. It's the only time you'll see me even try to remotely sing uh, for PAX. I did it. Um, and I'm sorry, I'll apologize in advance if you check out that video, um, you know, uh, I issue fair warning on that. But we have a, a lot of fun doing those pieces and putting them out on YouTube in different, different avenues. So, uh, but we're always open to suggestion on how to make sure we get our word out that we're here. We just did start also a, a text program with the neighbors who come to our door, if they uh, text a code, they become part of our uh, of a chain, and we can text them when uh, if we get you know a random donation. Like I said, Lytle will call us when they all of the sudden have you know 50 gallons of milk. So then we can text this chain and say milk available today, come get it, and and so that's another way. Any other questions? I, I think I Great hit stuff. all, the, yeah. all the highlights of, of who we are and what we do. Yes, thank you, Mary, for sharing uh, today. You guys really are a, a treasured resource in the Phoenixville community, for sure. We appreciate uh, what you, all you do uh, for the community. So thanks for your time this morning. Thank you. And anybody is invited to come for a visit. Uh, you know, we can socially distance that if you want to take a peek at our operation. We're, we're big enough. You know, of course, we'd require you right now to wear a mask into the building, but I'm, I'm happy to give you the, the 50 cent tour, maybe even a dollar's worth. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Can I ask a few more questions? I don't want to dominate the conversation. No, no, no. But. Um, uh, so I guess, so, I, so you do take donations, but are there certain donations that are more helpful to PACs, like are mon mon monetary donations more helpful or are there specific foods? Um, both, you know, monetary donations are wonderful, uh, because then we can, we have the ability to purchase whatever it is we need at a given time. Uh, but we always keep what we call a hot list on our website and that's like the 10 items we need the most at, at any given time. But generally speaking, uh, cereal, canned pasta, uh, pancake mix and syrup are a big thing. 
and uh, Hellman's mayonnaise. But so we update that that list as necessary. And I'll tell you another really helpful thing are any cleaning products or paper products because those items cannot be purchased with food stamps. So uh, we like to give our, our clients or our neighbors um, access to those items that, that they couldn't buy with food stamps if, if they're entitled to food stamps. Uh, we also, uh, interesting, maybe fun fact for everybody to know, we do give out diapers and wipes, uh, baby food, and we also do pet food and pet products as we have them. But we always, we pretty much always have dog food and cat food and, and sometimes other uh, pet products as well. So as far as volunteering goes, would it be, so could I volunteer like in person or online? I guess, how does, I don't know. I don't really know how that works. Or right, that's so you, you could call, we have a, a um, person who is our volunteer manager. She's a staff member. Uh, you can either go online and fill out an application and then she'll give you a call or you could call the PACS number directly and uh, say you're interested in volunteering and they'll transfer you to her and she'll get some information from you and find a good fit. But we can always use sorting and stocking and uh, we have a number of uh, ways that people can volunteer. So even outside the building, like I said, we have this delivery service uh, we have this, these recovery uh, options going to, you know, Giant or Lytle or Wegmans or wherever uh, to pick up the product and, and bring it back. And, you know, if you have a license, we have a really cool van you can drive. So. <laughs> All right, can I ask one more thing? Sure. Um, so I, I don't know if you've heard of Kimberton Whole Foods, but I, uh, I work as employee there. Mm -hmm. um, so I was just wondering, we, we also have a free bin of food there that uh, is just there for the employees, but there's always like too much bread and stuff there, like more than it can take. So I was like, oh, I can give them the bread. And then you're like, we always have too much bread. So I was like, yeah, I don't but, know if you still- but, but we're finding ways to redistribute that. You know, that's, that's a work in progress. And that's a goal of mine because we do have an abundance of bread, but we're finding ways to make sure it gets out into the community. And Kimberton Whole Foods has been a great partner of PAX. In fact, they just uh, were our auction sponsor. And, and I know we have a good partnership um, as, as they have an abundance of food, but always willing to, um, you know, if we want to connect about that and how we can make that work, um, That'd be amazing. Great questions there. Great, thank you. And and your name is? I know your mom was Renee, but I yes, my name is Louis. Louis, thanks. Yes, you're welcome. Okay, well, thanks again, Mary, and thanks everyone else for joining us uh, this morning for the presentation. Thank you. And thank you all for taking your time to learn about us. I appreciate it. Thank you. It's good information. Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Nice talking to you. Nice thank talking you so much. To you. Thanks again. Take care, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day now. You too. Thank you.